have a hive tyrant, and I dragged it out of the box to see what I've got. There was no assembly booklet, but fortunately I found a copy of it online that I could refer to and figure out what some of the more weird bits were. Grabbing wire cutters, I started cutting it free of the sprues and using an exacto at an angle to the plastic, scraped away the mold lines, which were pretty minor, mainly along the legs and arms, but that's about it. Now, when I first started gathering models, I bought some magnets. These were the Magnet Soul Magnets Combo Pack for miniatures. They were about 300 magnets and they came in three sizes. I initially tried them on my Tyranid Warriors, but it was just way too fiddly, and so I gave up in frustration and just glued the weapons in position. I liked Death Spitters and Bone Swords, and went in that direction with a Venom Cannon, with a single trio with Scything Talons and a Barbed Strangler. Okay, some backstory here. When I first started mustering my swarm, obviously there were some go-to guys. Hive Guard, Ripper Swarms, Warriors, and the Swarm Lord, but I just couldn't find the latter, just the box set of the Hive Tyrant. Of course, I didn't know that the Swarm Lord was an optional build in the Hive Tyrant box, so to snag one, I turned to eBay. I won an auction, got an assembled one, stripped the paint job, which broke one of the chest spikes, so I added a few personal touches to spruce it up and posted my efforts online and was promptly informed that it had a not-so-great 3D printed torso. Someone had built a hive tyrant, printed off a quick torso, and then clapped all of the options for the Swarm Lord to it before painting it up and dropping it on eBay looking to exploit a naive newbie chump. Which was me! The Swarm Lord performed really well in my first few games, and then I saw an offer online for a cheap hive tyrant, so I grabbed it and it's been sitting in a box for ages because I wanted to continue playing with the knockoff and determine the build I wanted to commit to. With the new 9th edition codex, Swarm Lord has lost some of its appeal and the standard walking hive tyrant is looking much better. This really illustrated how quickly things can swing and change in this game. Mind you, it's probably just my timing. I got into 40k and started learning to play Tyranids. Out comes Octarius. Okay, let's relearn with these new rules. Then, crush a stampede. Okay, back to the drawing board and now go with monsters. And now, the new codex. Starting the learning curve all over again. But I love it. Okay, I'm going to try and magnetize again. This is a bigger model, so let's see if it's easier. Plus, I've been painting and modelling and making tons of terrain, so maybe my hands are a bit steadier. First up, basic assembly. I doubt my magnets are strong enough to hold the wings, so I'm ditching the flying hive tyrant variation and sticking with the walking one. Assembly is pretty smooth, except for those hoof talons. They are a baffling aspect and it took me quite a bit to figure out which ones fit well. Dropping a magnet onto the base of a drill bit lets you visually see what size will fit, so I decided to use the large magnet in the torso and the medium ones in the limbs. The drill bit needs a little bit of a wiggle to get the tiny extra bit of width so that the magnet fits snugly, because if you go a size up, it will be very loose in there. Now, when you do the adjacent socket, make sure to keep a finger over the other magnet, because otherwise, when you put your second magnet in and let go, the attraction from next door will yank it out of the hole and clap it to the other one, and then you are scrambling to get it off as the super glue starts to dry. For the limbs, I used a utility knife and cut the ball socket away to get a nice flat edge to drill into. Basically, the part of the socket that would otherwise be inside the hole is cut away. A couple of times I messed up the direction of the magnet. The best way to avoid that is to take a column of the magnets you are going to use and push it towards the torso. 
If it repels rather than attracts, drop a blob of superglue in the limb hole, push the column in and then wipe aside so you leave one inserted in place and flush with the flat surface of the limb. This all worked surprisingly well, so I decided to be adventurous and go a bit further. I think I can establish the build for the Swarm Lord as well, so I used the same method for the Bone Sabers and yep, they were just as easy as the Bone Swords. I am going to need to swap out the head, so I drilled a pit in the torso, added the big magnet, by the way you can use a column of the thinner magnets to lock to the bigger ones and use them like a handle to help you apply it. I also cut away the dome from the neck and then drilled and added a medium sized magnet. Perfect. For the Venom Cannon and the Barbed Strangler, once magnetized, I dropped them in place and then glued the feed tube to the gun. Let it dry and then removed it so I could add just a little bit of army painter green stuff to help make the connection between limb and torso more solid. I squished a bit of blue and a bit of yellow together until they turned green, rolled it out into a thin tube and then added it to the model. Breaking out my lockpicks, I used them to smooth the green stuff into place and mold it to ensure there's no gap in the join. For the minor gaps, the Mr. Dissolved Putty and an old brush and a dip of the putty and painted it into the gaps. Mainly the one on the tail, the numerous ones on the back chitin and on the legs, these were the prime areas of concern. I then grabbed a metal ruler and because of the magnets I can clip all of the limbs and heads to the surface so I can blast them all with primer in one go. And actually, once they were dry, I wiped the primer off of the ruler and balanced it between a couple of glasses. So I can now paint the limbs and the heads all over and just clip them back onto it so they can dry. Okay, time to apply my Hive Fleet colour scheme. First up, a layer of Macrag Blue on the skin, followed by Zerus Purple on all the areas of Chitin. As I was painting, I noticed that the Bone Sabers had a weird pit by the wrist. Then I remembered a bunch of little Chitin shells on the sprues that I hadn't removed, and so I discovered they should be placed right here. This oversight was actually fortuitous, because I can now paint these separately purple and then add them after. They are really small, so I'd probably screw up painting them several times and have to keep touching up my errors. So instead, I get to paint the blue skin on its own, paint these purple, and then add them afterwards. Now, white scar in all of the vents and gills and in the cannon muzzles, so that when I add the Nihilic Oxide technical paint, it really glows. As it settles into the troughs, it adds a deeper color while leaving the raised areas much lighter. And now, a nice, generous layer of Nuln oil over everything. Once it was dry, breaking out the Imric Blue dry, and dipping my brush in, I started painting the ends of the bone swords and sabers, including the blades on the two head variants, and the various prominent spikes on the legs and the weapons. And as I established a solid color, it sheds just enough paint so that I could start dry brushing the rest of the stuff with the leftovers, applying it to the ribs, the jaws, the cheeks, the legs, the arms, the weapons, basically all over. And I also started establishing a more solid color for the tail tip as well. Then onto the Ethereum Blue Dry to do the same thing, just further towards the tips of the swords and on the spikes and on the tail tip. Now, this got some accidental dry brushing swipes on bits that I actually wanted to be Nihilic Oxide. Some of the weapon gills and on the Bone Sword and Bone Saber secondary brines. So I added a little more of the Oxide, which erased the Null Noil which was giving the trenches prominence. Okay, I watered down some Null Noil. One drop of the oil, two drops of water. Stirred it up and applied it to the areas that had lost their accent. Once everything was dry, a final touch of white scar on the blade tips and the spike tips, and with a very small brush, a very, very light dry brush on the secondary brains and some of the larger gills and vents. And then a steady dry brush of Gene Steeler Purple on the chitin, and the final touch, a tiny dab of Moot Green to make my glowing eye. One last stage, grabbing a lockpick, 
I used it to scrape the paint and such off of the magnets so they lock together more potently. Now, seeing as I have absolutely no assembly to do because of the magnets, I guess let's finish up with the base. I glued a few of the larger pieces of slate stone into place with super glue and then squirted on some Elmers and wiped it around with a brush so I could sprinkle on the smaller slate stone and let it dry. Once dry, I turned it upside down and gave it a few knocks with a pen to shed the loose stuff and we're ready to varnish it. From about a foot away, a quick squirt from every direction and now let's have some fun. The walk-in hive tyrant with bone sword, lash whip and venom cannon. And here we have one with barbed strangler and scything talons. And finally, the swarm lord itself.